let's get started. It's about 8.20 Monday morning. First engineers here, heat pumps being delivered, a pallet load of valent goodies. And this is just about 8.30. The second uh, engineers arrive in and the second uh, delivery by City Plumbing is coming. This is about 9 a.m. now. They've got a load of radiators for us. The third uh, British gas engineer arrives about 9.30 and a third delivery with loads of brass fittings. Um, again, this is around about 9.30 Monday morning, so unloading, trying to make sense of all the bits and pieces that are on the pallets, city plumbing, a buffer tank and a few other bits, so that's the morning. Okay, well it's day number one of our heat pump installation, and so far things have been delivered, and there's just a couple of hiccups, so let me show you, first of all, you can see the main heat pumps here, a buffer tank, some big radiators over the back there, some smaller radiators at the front here, pipe work, all sorts of valves and stuff, but there is no hot water cylinder. The guys have come in first thing this morning, uh, they've sheeted the place up, nice and neat and tidy, nothing to trip on up the stairs. Okay, well they've started working here, you can see where they've been drilling into the wall, ready to fit the vertical upright radiator. And here's one we prepared earlier. So that's one of the new vertical radiators that's gone on already. So they've mounted that, ready to start running the pipe work through. You can see where they're making a start with the base and those are the rubber isolation feet for the heat pump to go tucked in over in that corner. Just starting to make some progress. Unfortunately, because the cylinder's not here and the guys had uh, four different deliveries that they were pack unpacking and checking, uh, slow start, but you know, now everything's here apart from the hot water cylinder. So until the cylinder arrives, they can't start chopping out the old gas boiler and the old cylinder. So they're cracking on with what they can do, which at the moment is radiators and getting the heat pump sighted and getting the base all ready to go. I'll give you a little update at the end of the day. Right, end of day one, they've packed up and the heat pump is roughly in its position. It's not its final resting place but you can see it sits nicely in that little recess. Pipe work to go along the wall tomorrow. Um, that's one of their main jobs. But you can see all the required clearances, access down there to the pipe work. I'll show you what they've managed to get up to today inside. Well, we've got one vertical radiator hung in here and a second one hung in here. And um, they are just starting to figure out the uh, exact pipework runs. So that will be a job for the morning. They've got to try and somehow get pipework to radiators that have never had pipework. And the nearest source is the other side of that wall. So the challenge is to get the pipes through and in a neat fashion and perhaps hidden in some trunking along this edge to uh, feed both of the radiators. So that is where we're at at the end of day one. It's been a slow start but uh, a lot of the time has been spent sorting through all of the bits that have been delivered and chasing up the hot water cylinder. Just before they left they did give me the news that uh, it seems like it was a city plumbing mistake and uh, they are going to deliver it but not until Wednesday so they're going to be doing all the radiator work and a lot of the pipe work and preparation and electrics um, it, tomorrow which will be Tuesday and then on Wednesday will be the big rip out of the gas boiler and the cylinder when the hot water tank actually arrives with us so that is the end of day one here's a bunch of the stuff that will be fitted over the coming days we've got a couple more radiators there a buffer tank all of the control units and uh, couplings and fittings you probably can't see any of that but boxes of stuff and four separate deliveries and we still haven't got the hot water cylinder 
but that's all to come over the next few days. Here we are on day two and it is all go. Four vans, four engineers on site. We're starting work out in the conservatory where the two new upright radiators have been hung. As you can see, they quickly got to work routing the copper pipe work. There you can see it attached at the bottom of one of the radiators. Fairly neat work. Drilled through that little board there to try and get access and we're running some copper pipe up the side and this is all pretty early in the morning so they go upstairs lift the floorboards to try and find the roots of where they're going to get the feeds from and things don't quite go as planned This is day two and here's a little update of how they're getting on. So we're below the boiler. This is where the 28 mil primary pipes are coming in. And this is uh, obviously not finished. They're still waiting for the proper insulation kit to arrive. But that's one of the areas that they've been working today. Over here, we've uh, got where the electrician's been working. So the top one is a new consumer unit, which is gonna have all the heat pump related bits. And the lower one is some sort of breaker and surge protector, which is the meter cabinet is directly the other side of this. And our old consumer unit is just up there. There's been a lot of work up here. Not that you'll see much of it now. Carpet was up, chipboard flooring had to be cut up. And I did get, I did snap some pictures while they were in there. You can see that this this uh, 15 mil pipework that runs in here, there were some 10 mil micro bore feeds that spurred off down into the kitchen originally, and there uh, fi the 15 mil feed comes from the bedroom next door. They were hoping to tap into this. They were hoping they'd find a 22 mil, which they could then feed the two large radiators in the dining area but no such luck. So they took up the floor in here. They also took up the floor in here, but there was no 22 mil to be found here. And the pipework again was running across the room towards into the next bedroom. So they took up the floor in here and they didn't find the 22 mil at all. And And so what they found after drilling some holes and using a bore scope is that the 28 mil uh, does feed off here and uh, then it quite quickly feeds off into multiple 15 mils that then uh, drop down into 10 mil to the lower radiators. So they're gonna have the hallway flooring up and they're gonna be running a 22 mil from the airing cupboard and they're gonna run it across the landing and they are probably going to be running it into this room to then be able to spur off that 22 mil. I'll show you what they're doing outside. So out here in the meter cupboard you can see where it's just uh, drilled through where they're going to bring a feed um, from here and they're going to bring a feed into the new uh, breaker and the new consumer unit. And there's another hole that comes back out of the consumer unit which is going to feed the heat pump. Out here you can see where the two holes have been cored for the feed and the return, 28 mil primary pipe work. And they don't have the finished uh, insulation that they'll be using. So they've just been mocking this up for now. And, uh, you can see the type of strapping that they're using to fix it on around the outside of the insulation. So it's fully fully uh, thermally broken and decoupled and that's coming all the way along here and then at this point not 
really sure why they've got a downturn on the end. Maybe that's just a temporary holding position. Getting some of the valves and stuff ready here. Okay, in here today, and they've been doing a lot of head scratching and bringing down the 15 mil copper feed and return for these big vertical radiators. And as you can see, they've run it up and it's going up to that radiator and feeding into that room that we saw earlier. And because of the different widths and levels, there's been quite some um, head scratching to make it happen. So it runs up there, this one they've neatly drilled through and this one comes down neatly, hidden behind their tools now. But this one is already nicely piped up there. So as this is all going to gonna end up in some nice clean white uh, plastic trunking all the way across here and so they've got that level so that it will just be one white vertical bar that runs the whole way left to right and they've managed to get the uh, as you can see they've got a pair of holes there and a pair of holes there for the feed and return so that's how we're looking after day number two and uh, maybe I've missed something maybe I haven't but that should give you a quick snapshot of what's happened on day two and as I mentioned earlier We've had four to here today. We've had three heating engineers and uh, an electrician. I also learned a little bit today. Maybe this is some information to pass on. Uh, these four guys are all, well, actually, the electrician seems like he's been with British Gas for a while. Um, the three heating engineers are relatively new to British Gas. They're pretty much a new installation team. They've been taking over a lot of the jobs that British Gas had been outsourcing to companies like Heat Force, which I know hasn't gone necessarily very well for British Gas, judging by some other feedback from other users. But the team seemed brilliant. Um, two of the guys are well experienced with heat pumps and they've done um, countless installs with uh, previous firms that they've been with. Uh, one of the other guys seems like he's uh, learning on the job a little bit more taking up the kind of apprentice role but he seems uh, to take a lot of pride in his work and is uh, you know very neat and tidy and polite so he's a great uh, tradesman to have in the house and um, he seems to really be enjoying the work environment with British Gas and all the training that has been provided so so far everything is looking okay uh, a few hiccups and a few speed bumps in the road but um, we're day two now of what was projected to be a five day installation. And uh, I guess luckily the lead installer yesterday uh, helped me to uh, manage the expectations <laughs> and basically said, uh, look, I'm not sure we're gonna get this done in a week. So just, you know, just kind of prepare yourself that we may be back Monday and Tuesday next week, just buttoning things up. But they've assured me now they're, you know, breaking the back of things that everything should go a lot quicker and a lot smoother over the next few days. It's day three and they've brought in the cavalry. Five are here today, two electricians and three plumbers. An important delivery has arrived. Here comes the hot water cylinder and came with uh, some bits and pieces as well. <laughs> Yeah, Unistore 200 litre, I think the tank is. So we're back to seeing how they're getting on with the pipe work here. And they started soldering a lot of the connections. You can see where it's been sleeved through the wall. I don't know if I showed that previously. And they're starting to solder and fix all the connections. So this is how they're getting it up there. To the right hand side, you see the 22 mil, which reduces down to 15 mil. And there, this is where the new pipes come to those upright radiators. They were running this in plastic, but they did re then replace it with copper afterwards. So um, 22 mil there has gone in and been run for the uh, biggest lengths of it. So this is now in the airing cupboard where the electrician's been working with some of his trunking. Day three, let's start with what we've got in here. This is the main heat pump controller gone in to the old airing cupboard and 
various isolators, a fuse spur, which I think is for the controller, plug socket, which will be for the Wi-Fi um, module, and then the final switch over there. Oh, that's for the new immersion that's going in. And you can see they've added trunk in and they've run wire in which goes down to where the old boiler was. So that's what's gone in in the cupboard. You can't see it, but these carpets and the floors have been up all day and they've run a 22 mil pipe, which has connected here, was run down, turned 90 degrees, runs through here, and then it goes th that way through that wall and then spurs into where the conservatory is. No work on this uh, specific piece of it today. They've been doing a lot of the electric work outside, which I'll show you in a bit. And here you can see where the cables are coming down from the airing cupboard. Over here you can see where the cables will be going in through that hole. At the moment we've got that one, two, three cables coiled up ready to go in started going into some trunking and they started clipping it to the wall which heads over there to where you can see the existing boiler flue is here at the back of the heat pump they've connected on the flexes which come from the heat pump itself so that stops a lot of the vibration being transmitted and uh, they've brought it out at the moment into that 28 mil copper pipe and you can see they've got some of the external lagging on there up until those unions. We've got two isolator valves for the feed and return hot and cold. And we've got a little bit more of this external got a bit more of this external lagging. But unfortunately the delivery today was meant to send 16 meters of it and the delivery today only sent two meters of it so you can see it's got like a pvc shell around the insulation foam i wonder if i can see what does that say on it i say something solar if that makes sense to anyone that's the type that's being used and again here's the other end of the electrics oh, some of that is already going inside some of that is feeding down to the front where it's gonna bring power and one of these will go off to the heat pump so so this is where we're at on day three um, they informed me that they are still outstanding a few bits obviously the external lagging is missing um, several meters so they can't finish that bit of the job and they are missing now the antifreeze valves which is also a problem for connecting but otherwise now the cylinders here expansion vessels here and the rest of the bits and bobs showed up today with the city plumbing um, delivery so it's time to just crack on and finish the last bit it's day four now and this is where all the action has been happening you can see they've got the expansion vessel up on the wall and plenty of the new pipe work I think that's some sort of pressure relief valve that has gone in there and some isolators of course the old cylinder is gone but they've thrown all their tools and stuff back in so you can't really see the floor where it was the electrician has made a bit more progress with the cabling and the trunking capping going on and that's followed through to downstairs. I'll go and show you how they got on in the garage with the boiler. So the electrician's just finishing up work here. Um, you can see they've uh, lined up a few of the breakers there for the various feeds. We got we got a main at 40 amp 20 16 and a 16 and the big one the surge protector um that comes straight in from the meter so those have gone together there we go good riddance to the gas boiler um as they found out when they were doing pressure tests i think the gas boiler internally the gas valve was leaking something like 
20 millibars of pressure, something along those lines. So it was definitely wasting us lots and lots of money throughout the year. There is no doubt about that. Now you can see where the incoming mains uh, comes out of the meter, comes in here, and then we're dropping. Oh, I should video what I'm doing. Comes up to here, and then you can see where it splits out. So this is for the new board, and this is for the existing uh, consumer unit. The, there's one more clamp there, but otherwise, no more work, no more. Uh, action for this end so no more um, no more plumbing has happened at the heat pump end but the electrician has been busy we've got two cables there one is for the power and one is for the data and they come around here clamped up and then they run all the way along all the way. And then you see the data is going straight in there where the controller is going to be and the power runs all the way up to the front there. So that's what we're looking like from the outside and that's where the boiler was. Okay, I can't remember if I showed you that this is all plumbed in now in our new vertical radiator installation. And I think I showed that it was sleeved in 22mm and then 15mm runs that will be capped. It comes down here. In here we got new radiator today. So this was a Type 21 or a P Plus. It was a twin panel, a single convector. We've gone for a double convector. So um, that meant adapting the pipework a little bit because uh, we'd already brought it out for the P plus, so it was max. But anyway, that's a 700 high by 1400 wide. So a big boy, that one. Here in the hallway, we did have a 700 by 600 uh, P plus or type 21. Now we've gone for a 700 high by 1400 wide. Uh, it's still a type 21 a p plus so we haven't increased the depth at all it's still the same depth but of course we've uh, more than doubled the width of it going from a 600 to a 1400 which should really help the whole hallway the landing and have the knock-on effect there which is good stuff and um, managed to get this end in without any modifications to the pipe work but because of the added width that's where the original bit came out and had to bend it and bring it over here into the new TRV so you can see that's because of the extension needed all right in here in the study uh, this is a radiator that I supplied and I hung on the wall and they've just connected up the pipe work so this is a 750 tool by one meter 1000 mil wide and this is again a type 21 p plus and um, they've just managed to just adapt up the pipe work which needs a little bit of work making good but um, they've managed to get that all together now so that's the end of day four we currently don't have any heat in or hot water and it's not the warmest day but we're hopeful now they've broken the back of it tomorrow they should be flying it's day five I didn't realize yesterday these this wasn't fully connected up you can see we're now on that's the main isolator heat pump immersion and controls and as you can see only the immersion is on so we should have hot water which we didn't have yesterday but still no heating and surge protector but that's all wired up and working This is where the main 28 mils are coming in and um, go up through the old boiler cupboard straight up into the cylinder cupboard and those 15 mil pipes that run next to it are 
for a radiator here in the garage. So that's all done and you can see a little bit of block work so we've uh, so the wind's not coming in anymore and brickwork has been completed on the outside as well. So the electrics are completed out here now. You can see the chunking goes up and then goes across down there. Let's see. There you can see. I'll pick that up on the other side and you can just about see the patch of brickwork. Now we're picking up from the other side. You can see where they've patched in the brickwork. Oh, it doesn't... No, not quite finished. Bit of, bit of point in there to tidy up, but at least they've roughly filled the hole. We've got the electric conduit and there is some sort of pressure relief or something. Looks temporary anyway, but that's a 15 mil sleeved into a 28. Oh, let me take you down here to the primaries, the feed and return. So I believe this insulation they're using, there's the tape that's sealing it up. But I believe this is Armaflex, 19 millimeter wall. There's the isolation valves. Okay. And you can see here, uh, we are connected in but just not enough to get it going and um, the antifreeze valves are still not with us so hopefully they're going to be here next week I already showed you all of those electrics all completed fingers crossed so here in the bathroom new radiator this was a type 11 and it's 500 mil wide possibly by 500 mil tall or maybe 600 mil tall. This is now 700 mil by 700 wide, and it's now a type 21. So it's, I don't know, three times the output, maybe more. So fills that space quite nicely. Here's the buffer tank that's yet to go in. Okay. And here's the cylinder cupboard. The cylinder is finally in and it's plumbed in enough that the immersion should be working. And so we've got the light on there, should be heating the tank up. Doesn't feel warm to the touch, but I'm presuming that that's just the good insulation. Let's see. Oh yeah, the pipe on the top does feel warm, so we should have hot water good. We've got the expansion vessel up there for the hot water and some sort of diverter valve or one-way valve. That looks like a pressure relief valve. And is this an auto air vent? Something like that. But as you can see, that's the um, diverter valve that will, at the moment, is just going so this one is coming up from the heat pump and then at the moment this one goes down to the cylinder and this one will then go up and go oh yeah it goes up goes into the buffer tank which is going to go on there and then it will feed off into the uh, central heating so at the moment there's a few capped off pipes and underneath these tools are some of the feed and flow um, yeah, feed and return for the central heating as well. So, still more work to do on the controls to wire that in, but um, it's getting there. They also completed the radiator circuit under the floors today with just a little bit more soldering so that that is all complete, even though you can't see it now. I did, I think I got some pictures, so I'll check them in.
And finally for today, we are swapping over and uh, switching from a pumped or gravity fed Aqualisa shower over to the high pressure controller. So um, just getting that in, ready to go. Unfortunately, the audio didn't record, so you have to put up with my dodgy voiceover. The buffer tank's in now, and we've got expansion vessels one and two all plumbed up and in place. Plenty of bits and pieces everywhere, pressure gauge. You can see, I think that valent box is for the Wi Fi adapter. And here we've got the heating circulation pump plumbed in. This is all 28mm pipe work in and out of the buffer tank and I'm just kind of trying to show you the route that it takes and uh, that's the diverter valve there and this is where it connects into the existing heating circuit so plenty of work on day six that they've managed to achieve in that cupboard and the electrician stayed a couple of hours late after to get things wrapped up. So we've got some sort of vent or discharge pipe here that they've brought down and terminated there and that one's shielded. neatened up a few bits and pieces there two valve tops I thought they look like they're the top of isolator valves right so we've got here antifreeze valves that arrived and refitted today there's one and there's the second one plenty more of the lagging to go to get that all wrapped up and uh, that looks like the external weather temperature sensor making some significant progress on the trunk in today you can see they've mitered up that corner there and uh, still just a test fit for now and uh, you can see that one continuous piece across the top there and uh, see a little bit of finishing work that needs doing mitered a little top cap there and then a nice continued straight run down so it's coming together with those little kind of finishing touches now well that's it they've called it a wrap on day number seven and everything seems to be working better than perfect can you see it's running can you hear it's running or can you just hear the road noise? And the final trunking and radiator work here in the dining area. 
I need to do a bit of painting and decorating which is left over from my conservatory roof job but the trunk in itself looks okay doesn't it forms a sort of A frame let's see how they've joined it here There we are anyway. So the lagging, uh, you can see where it comes through the uh, through in the external and then switches to switches to the internal. I wonder if I can feel the temperature difference. Yeah, the top one is marginally colder, so it must be the return pipe, and the lower one must be the the flow, the feed. Well, anyway, the um, lagging has gone on today. We've got is that a magnetic filter? Good stuff. And here's the nemesis of our installers, this cupboard that uh, was not quite as forgiving as they had hoped, but they managed to work around all the constraints and got there in the end. And you can see they've uh, gone to work with all of the lagging now as well. So. That's where we're at now. Well, that's the end of the job. We're going to see how this runs and performs.